And now a second shot at giving and potentially a way to solve poverty all around the world. Michael Fay is the co-founder of Give Directly, which is the largest nonprofit that lets donors send cash directly through mobile money transfers to people who are living in poverty. So think about this. To date, they have distributed more than $500 million. It's a concept that Jack Dorsey has invested in. Uh, Mackenzie Scott, formerly Bezos, has contributed to as well. Michael says what we've been doing wrong here when it comes to poverty is that we assume we know what people need instead of giving them cash to make the decisions themselves. I want to talk about this idea that, that extreme poverty lies in the arena of about a dollar ninety a day. Um, so, so for people in the U.S. who haven't delved deep into this topic like you have, that almost seems so abstract and so unbelievable. Can you explain what that looks like and how we could help the dollar ninety a day people? Yeah, a dollar ninety a day is shockingly small. Yeah. And it does not buy you a lot. It gets you over the basic needs, food, some shelter, clothing, uh, the absolute basic needs. To put that into specific context, $1.90 is called PPP. It's wonky. In most countries we work, it'll be a bit less than $1.90. Um, people aren't starting at zero, right? So people might be starting at 50, 60 cents. So what that essentially means is that for a dollar a day, that you give to another human being, you can take them over the poverty line and allow them to meet their most basic needs. So I wanna go back to that topic about giving people money actually brought them out of poverty. I think there's a lot of people that would argue against that and say, well, then that doesn't teach them how to, I mean, there's, you know all the arguments, that doesn't teach them how to work, it doesn't teach them how to sort of like fend for themselves or create a business or create a skill or learn a skill. What would you say to those people? Yeah, there's that old expression, isn't there? Uh, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Uh, and I think it's really compelling at a first order, but when you start to break that down, uh, you realize where it falls short. So the first assumption is that we are good at teaching people to fish. Uh, and as it turns out, if you look at the literature on training programs, we're not particularly good at teaching some of these skills. And the second is that this person wants to be a fisherman in the in the first place a lot of people don't want fish they want to do something else or they have some other skill and the third is that they can actually afford a fishing rod over time if we train someone but they can't buy the capital to do what they want to do what's the point point? and that's where it's a nice aphorism uh, but it often falls short when you actually look at the evidence if i'm yeah, understanding there's... correctly what you're saying is for for people that are experiencing extreme poverty giving them a you know teaching them a skill that they may not necessarily even be inclined to do or to have or might not make sense for their skills doesn't work in a lot of cases we see it doesn't work on average uh, and, and don't forget what the cash does the cash allows people to invest poverty is a lack of resources people can't even start to think about investing in their future when they don't have the resources for today cash transfers have been evaluated more than any other development intervention at this point and it begs the question of why have we evaluated it so often and i think it starts from a place of we don't trust people we don't trust wait so if i just give money they're going to do good things with the money and it turns out time and time again we find that's exactly what they do and the things that we might fear spending it on alcohol stopping work uh, spending it on drugs, other vices, uh, you don't see in the data. And is that talking about in the United States or internationally or everywhere? Yeah, it's a great question. So most of the evidence comes from abroad. And the reason for that is simply that a dollar goes further so people are able to run larger experiments. So most of the experiments that we've seen are from abroad, but certainly not exclusively. And the actual longest cash transfer research project came from the U.S. It looked at something called the Mother's Pension Program from the 1920s and said, what happens 50 years later, not to those mothers, but actually to their children? And what they found was the children of mothers that received cash lived longer, had higher income, uh, and so forth, which is just remarkable, 50 years later. 
this is part of a full 30 minute conversation about poverty. We really get into it, our country versus other countries. He talks about the guaranteed income programs in the U.S., how he thinks the U.S. alone could solve the world's poverty crisis. It's episode 249 of the Second Shot podcast. I will post it myself as soon as I get off the air, and it'll be available at CW33.com. Click on Second Shot. It is interesting, the comparative studies, we were talking about it as we were listening to the interview, the comparative studies with how aid to those who are impoverished is treated differently and put to different uses to greater success than here in this country. Absolutely. And what can we learn from that? Yes, yeah. e e exactly. Yes, yeah. so it's a, it's a fascinating discussion. I hope you listen to the full 30 minutes to really get a, an understanding of poverty in the world.